Hello and welcome to another Media Watch. Media Watch, play me for this fala week. Baba uh, Yumi Garem. Two fala panelists here with Team Yumi. Uh, Yumi Garem, Alfred Sasako on my right. Hello, and of man. course, Priestley Habru. We two fala number by Sidan with Team Yumi. This fala Media Watch. We have one fala initiative, the Media Association of Solomon Islands, Masi. And as usual, me host and moderator, play me this fala program, Gina Kikia. Well, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Blame me for this follow week. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thomas, for uh, accepting my mm -hmm. uh, request for coming to the program. Blame me this week. Alfred, once again, you are under the radar. That's the way you want to say, Alfred, no more, all the way come in the program. You seem to be a naughty guy, not really. <laughs> but, anyways, we've got some um, stories where you've been the highlights, especially with the Malaita Provincial Government. Priestley, if you don't mind, we'll start with Alfred, mm -hmm. uh, especially the issue if those were fala no watch him news uh, alfred have been writing uh, one for a story uh, where he me say that um one local member blow malaita provincial government he me uh, taiwan or supposedly something or awesome. and then i got to deny him this for a story where alfred have me writing and of course been making some for comments and talk talk and i got to even call him you liar to your alfred mm -hmm. uh what number you say with talem lo that one yeah, well, number one, I'm also <clears throat> um, I, I mean, thank you for the opportunity for try and uh, clarify me. Yeah? The story me right there, maybe not say that this fella particular individual uh, was in Taiwan. Uh, the story me right there was the word me using was reportedly in Taiwan. Okay, and I, I think I've explained it in uh, letters to the editor where me write them that. Reportedly, he no minim mania him lo there. Uh, there is, of course, the strong possibility that he could have been on his way. Yeah. Uh, so the people who had the information um, at their disposal, Ogata mentioned him, and I have taken a great length of time to to check. Uh, for example, me email him the Australian High Commission to see if they knew that this particular individual was actually uh, given a visa to travel to Australia because me talk with him for an affairs and I got to say three weeks ago he approached Ministry of Foreign Affairs for a visa for a visa law official passport him to be transferred to the to an ordinary one okay they refused because the reason, uh, according to foreign affairs, where what give him, he, he gave was that he was going to Australia on medical grounds. Okay, so the answer of the Gimulahem and Motsim Noma, if it was a, a medical issue, uh, appropriately, the, uh, the uh, letter should come from the, the chief. Physician. I don't know what they call it now, but uh, this is uh, something that I would specify, especially for members of parliament, in the parliamentary entitlements regulation that if you were to seek medical assistance overseas, the authorization to go there must come from the chief physician the hospital. Blow you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, me email him, as I said, Australian High Commission. I did not get a response until Monday this week. And response Blogata was, which made me really angry, was the fact that Ogata say, oh, we uh other start also what I would say, oh yeah, that individual Hemigarem a uh, valid visa, entry visa Australia. Okay, that's good. That doesn't answer anything. Because during this COVID-19 restriction law travel, yeah, uh, like Australia, in fact, passed a, a landmark uh, act where he may stop him now, even Australians coming back from India. The their, their, their clarification on that was, oh, because India, he may got him this for a new strain of COVID-19 that I had to take that. That, that measure, yeah? Whereas Solomon and free. But 
Look, I I am less convinced because I've dealt with uh, you know immigration issues there before. They, Australia has been good to me, and it's good to see that they had acted in the way they did by facilitating go go blow blow mm -hmm. uh, medical yeah, grounds. That, that's so, well, that's what they said. Mm -hmm. So, were you able to get confirmation from him too, for, from the person of interest? No. Why not? Uh, well, because I don't know where where I could get him. Oh. Yeah, I, because by the by that time he was already in Australia. Yeah, he was in Australia already. So, and he all I could uh, uh, see the next day was you know he was coming on and blah 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 and all that. So, first of all, the first part of my story, I mean, I'm through. Yeah, and travel. He traveled out of the country. Okay. Now, in terms of organizing medical people for looking him. And that's an expensive business here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I don't know about you, Tufala, but I have done quite a lot of form filling for what the people are apply for passport or for visa for Australia. One of the biggest questions of the require requirement blocker is that have you got enough money to live in Australia for the X number of days or whatever? Uh, so it's interesting uh, that Who's funding it. They yeah, have to get exactly. The money. So that's I, where you're coming from. That's right, because I, I've been told, and I don't want to make wild allegations, but I've been told by a, uh, uh, someone that, in fact, the Malay the provincial government uh, or obviously the, of the premier, Emmy Ogata, soliciting funds from Ogata businesses doing uh, uh, business lawki to help support. Uh, pay for travel blood. Uh, mm. One figure that was mentioned to me was one logging company who was uh, forced to pay fifty thousand dollars towards that, which mm. is good on their part. But I mean, should you uh, use this thing to basically extort money mm. when there are clear provisions there and procedures to follow? Yeah. So these are the things that uh, we need to understand. Yeah. So listening to Alfred Prisley, what's your <laughs> opinion or how would you cover the story mm. if, you, if you were to cover mm. a story like that? Yes, uh, interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking for uh, yeah. Sako. He had his uh, reasons why he followed the mm. story. Yeah. Um, I don't think we covered the story. Mm. Yeah, but I think the response later, no, I think if I'll cover it. Mm. But yeah, listening to um, Alfred, uh, as I've said, he had his reasons on why it was a public interest story uh, because he's the individual is a public figure and represent a provincial mm. government. Mm. And yeah, so we may not have got a much sale or story, and, but mm. I mean, like as I've said, Alfred got his uh, reasons on why mm. it was a public interest. Because at the end of the day, you may write story because it's a public interest. And mm. also, uh, these individuals are people who are holding public office. So. Yeah. So and that's when it what, comes to funds, yeah. it's it's good for yeah. you, Mr. Wena. I got the Selena come yeah. from yeah. who is sourcing yeah. there yeah. uh, or facilitating those things and mm. all them. Yeah? And the response where uh, him come from um, the other side of the story in response to Alfred's mm. story. Do you think him fair enough, or is it uh, personal uh, coming yeah, from I think, a public office or a public figure? Yeah, I think um, we don't really read much, <laughs> but I think the attack was here. As usual, as mm. Alfred has always been, uh, Alfred has always been facing yeah. uh, not not so much uh, friendly words used <laughs> and things like that, but it's the nature of the job too. Yeah, but yeah. I think they, uh, as a journalist, we, we need to be very careful on, especially the editors have the mm. final say on editing the words yeah. that are being yeah. used, especially in the response to at least them sound friendly and then most of the time go out. Mm. Yeah? Sometimes yeah. in defamation too. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the accusations made against me it was highly defamatory. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I mean, they call me liar. liar. Yeah, they're calling me a liar. And he has no proof to, to say and, that. And that, there's yeah. another comment made through Lo Yu too, like you're pro China. Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to explain that, that as a journalist, I write. Yeah. And whatever is told to me, me write them. Yeah. As long as me check him and that is that is okay. One thing that the public has not been been uh, led into, and I have not done any story on it, is very very serious allegations that the 
engagement blow this particular person is unlawful. Him no got him contract where what the uh, legal people what the uh, you know they uh, vetted and approved it. His engagement was also outside of the procedure, but he had clocked up allegedly. And I emphasize that word. He had clocked up allegedly more than half a million dollars in wages. Now, if if these allegations are true, um, then who now by pain, Selenia, oh. or just because him hold him that post that uh, him all right no more? Uh, I mean, these are the things where you we we really need to do, to get to the bottom of it rather than shooting at the hip yeah uh, or below the hip yeah? I'm not fair uh, because one of the reasons why we are here is because of the story where yes. you may write them yeah? mm. otherwise we wouldn't be talking, talking yeah about yeah about these things yeah mm. but I also um, you know um, I, I would say you know that that uh, whoever hem garem the, the the right to respond, mm. yeah, those things. Yeah. Uh, but the question that you ask is, do you have to go that low? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this question of the potential of using medical grounds in Australia and then to travel on uh, to Taiwan, the possibilities there are, are, are very, very real. Yeah, mm. uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, I know I used to live in Brisbane, and Taiwan's got a big mission in in in, in there, so they could uh, you know hold some discussions there. Mm. But I think the main concern with a lot of people or not looking is the fact that in engaging in activities or sem, the the uh, the, uh, the 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 result or the 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 action actually implied undermining the sovereignty of a of a national government yeah yeah and and um, uh, before that like uh, example before we were with taiwan yeah yeah and already the engagement with china hem garim with the Mokata province and yeah. they're finished now like has yeah. a sister relationship with yeah. guangdong yeah so having that People are saying that him same same no more same before him switch lo Taiwan ba already relationship him lo there too so what's yeah. the difference exactly like, so it, it's not really an issue some people are saying mm. so um, people are saying that okay it shouldn't be an issue because well before we switched already um, immigrant relationship with him China it's the same concept why is it a concern now that uh, yeah. you may have to jump up and down time uh, Malaita doing for instance. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's the that's the question. I mean, why why are we doing that mm. when in in terms of the Vienna Convention in establishing these diplomatic relations, it's a normal thing oh, yeah. where two two thing. two uh, states or what agree to form that relationship and mm. to so me me we find him hard and I, I to me it's a sad indictment on young people blue you me especially many of them who have had a good level of education and yet they seem to be promoting that kind of of uh, you know talk talk and also which for some fellow way are not educated to a level that also could give them some um, you know reason to uh, engage in activities that are not mm. you know acceptable yeah, to the Chinese. Mm. Well, thank you, Alfred. I think uh, coming back to um, mm. um, not what would, what should I say? Cyberbullying, not really, or it's cyberbullying? Maybe not. But mm. yeah, social media, you were one under attack. But then, of course, uh, Presley recently, one of the reporters from Island Sun, he was also um, being bullied. I mean, uh, yeah, on online. Not everyone but look him. But there was this story about the things that have happened in the Western province. And this reporter, him based, uh, he may go out from China. We come mm, back together. to um, uh, the issues where the journalists face him online, basically. Mm. So yeah, what happened in Gizo, Western province, for instance. Yeah? And he wrote something, an article about mm. uh, uh, social issues that happened down the West. And I guess, they're not happy. Like this article, and they made um, 
some of the things about him, him call him mm. like him, can accusations against him, him and it was shared on social media. But anyways, him come a lot of attention to me because um, him report a lot islands and that's of course in its simplest form cyberbullying. Mm. And you being a director of Island Sun, uh, what now you got in hotel and especially how do you protect your journalist or mm. if there are uh, is anything in place where you follow protecting more journalists from all the mm. kind of bullying or same online? Yes, it, it's a very unfortunate situation where um, that story, just to put it in context for understanding your public, you know, that, that mm. story was uh, written by one of our reporters where him just arrived in Mamatu, Logizo, with a family blame and base law there. So the, when, when the story came out, I think it was about, uh, you know, um, sto- uh, Reportedly saying that uh, you know uh, some young girls around Logizo, I think, what uh, due to COVID-19, uh, they are uh, you know selling themselves out there, and it's mm. sort of like it's a huge problem in Gijo or something or something. Okay. But he he didn't really actually um, uh, uh, name the sources or the people who were telling the stories to him, something or something. So. On that side, uh, when the story came out, it was you know sort of like putting uh, people and residents of Gizo, mm. you know, it's sort of like got to feel a little bit no not happy about the story, implying that uh, this is very um, um, happening around to Maslo Gizo, where mm. some of the accusations that reported that some people are just no more walk about no more yeah. doing their business. It's not so much that this is a problem, big problem or there something awesome. So that's the context of why they they come out and actually. Uh, really put him, uh, you know, cyberbullying, yeah, like mm. uh, really spoil him, him, uh, report him, some of the post, social media and things like that. I actually uh, uh, contacted him and to be and just a little bit of advising him, him that that's on my role as a, as mm. one of the directors. But I think the editors, uh, I think they, they must have, you know, contacted him and talked with him in terms of uh, how the story went and how it came out to be published. But on just on a, as a colleague, me actually talk with him and I mean we just inbox him and story about it. Just be careful on mm. how you report. At least you get the story balanced and ob- through observation and things like that. Actually try to verify it, just to be on safe side, no yeah? mm. Because when these things happen, people by not happy, anything can happen. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen, and they did go to the extent of you know naming him and putting his picture on the social media and things yeah. like that. And uh, him replied that actually those, the, the stories, it comes from people who are uh, residents from Gizo, and they're the ones who give him the story. Mm. And that's what he said. And I think some of the people within our newsroom would say that people who uh, comment and make uh, fun of him and things like that about the story are mainly those who are not based in Gizo. Mm. Uh, they're from Gizo, but they are maybe Staplohonier and Oman have access to uh, social media and things like that. But not really much, maybe some people will give you too, but uh, not happy to look at the story. <clears throat> but he, he says he stand by his story and that uh, they were given by credible sources about what was happening there. But me just tell, uh, advise him no more not to yeah, do a sensational stories that might have some repercussions on mm-hmm. him as a reporter there and on Island Sun as a, as a media organization. So it's a, it was an unfortunate incident that these things are happening in social media. Uh, because it affects him because he's there with his family too. Yeah. Uh, so what, what Mifala just for encouraging him is to ignore things that they they said about him and continue his work and try to, you know, uh, establish good relationship with the people and uh, doing stories that are positive stories and especially work with the uh, provincial government law there and or city uh, authorities law there to uh, get stories not only from Gizu but uh, the surrounding. Uh, places around uh, the positive stories yeah mm. uh, the good stories you know, <clears throat> stories that are worth uh, writing about and mm. good good news stories as you mean journalists always uh, savvy yeah? mm. what are good news stories then those are the things that him should cover him and not so much sensationalizing you know, the issues uh, surrounding because he him just go there and you know, it might be him might not make him good relationship too with them people that, uh, mm. due to his stories mm. so yeah, yeah. So I think those are the things that are a little bit story with him. And I'm sure the editors who are in all checking his stories and things like that, we've got the editors and chief of staff there who might have already been talking with him to, yeah, next time maybe not 
mm. writing more stories yeah. that might like affect them, yeah, regardless of our impact. Yeah. Um, division law, yeah. provincial government, or That's kind right. of same, yeah. rather than just hearing from <coughs> people in mind, mm. then one side, it's kind yes. of stories. So balancing the stories, very important. And speaking of social media, Alfred, you seem to grow a thick skin now, yeah? especially you now, every time low media, you under attack all the way. How do you manage to keep yourself sane? Well, and also, no uh, to me, um, uh, a number of things, like you talk about this uh, cyber uh, bullying, bullying and all these things. Yeah. of character. And also, no when you become uh, the focus of all this criticism and all that, how many of you are doing your work here? You're doing your work. I remember when I crossed into Bougainville, you know, as an example. Yeah? Maybe you, they say that sometimes you are not doing a proper work. Well, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, for me, like, I, I want to cite an example. When I, when I uh, went to interview Francis Ona in, um, in uh, you know, the Bougainville crisis, Bougainville yeah, crisis. Yeah. yeah. Late 90s. Yeah, um, 1990. And on Boxing Day, I went up to okay. see him, yeah? So, on my way from Balalai Airport, I was writing my stories. As soon as I landed at uh, uh, Henderson, me ring him go, always blow me from Sydney now that I'm right back and all that sort of stuff. Stories started coming out, and the PNG Defense Force, which, which at the time, I was putting blockade around the island here. Yeah. I said, man, yeah, lie, yeah, yeah. Him no go over there. Two hours later, or the photographs start coming out. So, so him also when when and, and I would encourage uh, Ben Bilua, yeah, uh, because he Ben is uh, I am proud to say um, was the first fruit of uh, this uh, Prime Minister's uh, Scholarship Award for Media, where him go him, yeah. You know, I established that when I was in the Prime Minister's office. Me uh, too, what's her name, Delhi also, yeah. We made a recommendation to the Prime Minister that. Every year, you should award him, uh, a, you know, a media award for someone to study. So, uh, my encouragement to him would be, you are doing the right thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. People will criticize you for doing the right thing, and that should give you the courage to stand up to any criticism. Yeah. So me, you could say whatever you want. Yeah, uh, but you must prove to me that I was wrong. Mm. Yeah. Uh, innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. Only through court now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think coming back to your yeah. question, just want to say some uh, one point number that uh, in terms of uh, people criticizing people in social media, yeah. uh, I think the unfortunate thing is uh, people don't really uh, uh, contribute to you know comment about issues. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's just the unfortunate thing because yeah. right. If we, uh, if we people even like discussing uh, ideas and things, or so something, mm. we should uh, discuss you now the, the, the issues, matter yeah. of contention yeah. and yeah. issues where there is not so much attacking, attacking the, the people. Yeah. 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 So that's the unfortunate thing about social media. So yeah. when we have uh, people discussing yeah, issue, that that's cool. That's it contribute to the issue. Yeah. And maybe if they want to contend uh, or a uh, little bit criticize him story, blah blah, then they should come up with mm. you know. These are the things that they should raise him on. These are the things that me fall not agree with him article. But mm. when it attacked the person behind the mm. man him writing story, and that's very unfortunate. I mean, that's that's what social yeah. Yeah, mm. social media him a little bit unfortunate. Little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think finally, mm. Noma, just before we finish, there's also another interesting thing we've been raised. Uh, people been questioning, him, especially independence, play me or some media, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it comes to um, one for a uh, relationship. I got to say that you got in with him, uh, China. China. Yes. And I think you felt sorry mm -hmm. now. This one with him, uh, Nanfang, Nanfang Media Group. Have you heard of mm -hmm. Nanfang Media Group? Like for you, Priestley, uh, there were claims that we mm -hmm. in the media we are now channelized and having this relationship with him, mm. this Fala Media Group. What can you say about that? Well, maybe Alfred can say something first before me. Okay. I've never heard of the name, but... <laughs> <laughs> Even uh, me too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, the but thing there is... were claims that mm. we are not being independent mm. now. We are uh, part of the Nanfang Media Group and we are having relationships and, you know... It's, it's, it's basically part of the pro propaganda. Yeah, for throwing all sorts of things into the uh, healthy, what should have been and should continue to be 
a healthy relationship between governments, yeah, yeah, mm. and and you see that everywhere, yeah, like Australia, U.S. You know, uh, what are journals blow me if they have had the opportunity? But I want to go visit a lot there, yeah. and visiting there does not necessarily mean bye bye. Oh, you know, independent now. Yeah? Mm. It basically adds to your own experience mm. and enhance yeah, knowledge. and enhance your knowledge about and skills about how to do things better the next time. So, yeah, I I find it hard to understand that. If you analyze it properly, long over the criticism of media, yeah, maybe eighty-five percent is for spoiling Naraman. Mm. And like you said, unfortunately, mm. we don't talk about issues, issues that should be moving us forward. Yeah. 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 And for you, non Yeah, media. I think uh, the cooperation that we may got in with them, uh, China, uh, we've seen the uh, delegation where media go last year. Yeah, so I right. think this relationship. Uh, that we got with them, China and especially with media, I think it's a it's just a step ahead of what the total delegation. What I think it was part of the delegation who went to China. Mm. So I think it's to do with uh, to do with now uh, how for him is a very utilizing uh, this uh, relationship that we got in China to do with uh, the media, mm. but remaining our independence and have stop. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the total number uh, media. Organization within the country or try for establish how they could establish relationship that utilize him now, uh, 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 you know, especially to do with technology. Yeah? Mm. How to how they can uh, uh, equip their newsroom with uh, technology and equipment and some. So so not so much that media or China by infiltrating <laughs> media <laughs> blaming. Yeah. Like that's the wrong concept. So it's to do with how they can assist us. For example, suppose me for like starting television, then how could we uh, source? Yeah. Assistance, yeah, ABC or BBC. Yeah, it's just the same. How do you how about to come training me? Or maybe uh, take a media group from, uh, say, uh, two, three, four reporters from Solomon Islands and go and visit them. How they run their television? How they are doing their hmm. news? So, so not not so much that uh, by what are infiltrating me and come and no even running everything. Yeah. So we our independence and remain like there. We know we we do our due diligence uh, research too. That this, they are all the media. They may maybe promoting the Communist Party, but that's their own yeah. business. It's not our business yeah. to say, "Oh, you yeah. must follow." follow no, what's going on? Mm. We have our own independence. How huh? we just need you know, technical know-how, and maybe let me little bit of support in terms uh, in terms of like equipments and things like to support us to enhance our work. Mm. I think that's all. But there's a misunderstanding that all said about that by. Mainstream media of China have come and take over the mm. media. Mm. 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 Me, me as a media owner, me cannot allow them to want to. Yeah, mm. about take over me. Yeah. Because me, no boss lawyer. Yeah? They can support me. They can give money. They yeah. can advertise on me. That's what I want. Mm. I think I'm not. Yeah. The people need for clear all that. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much, Priestley. You summed it up very well, mm. gentlemen. I'm sorry, story more, but time him no allow na. Um, thank you, Thomas Alfred, as usual, uh, for coming on to the show. Mm. You yes. always in uh, Media Watch because of the stories <laughs> we've been covered and the responses we come from what the articles play you. Mm. That's the way for looking Alfred him every time, mm. most yes. times inside Low Media Watch because um, he has to respond or even we have to give him the room for him to also tell him side low story blame too because. Media Watch, a program by Initiative of Media Association of Solomon Islands. Basically, him also after someone follow watchdog too. Lo, okata waka where okata media okata dream. And uh, Alfred, uh, thank you so much for mm -hmm. availing yourselves as uh, always. And of course, Priestley, thank you to Mastu for you come on the program. Bye bye, me fala come back more in um, next week for stop sit down with me fala more. Lo another program or same. But until then, me Gina Kekia, you fala everyone got a nice week. Thank you for watching and staying with us.